Hello and welcome to Teaching Bio. Today we're going to look at the 11th required practical for AQA ALO Biology and that is the use of calibration curves to identify unknown concentrations. So the context that is given in the AQA specification is for the determination of the concentration of glucose in urine samples. However, a calibration curve is universal, okay? So we can use that to determine, you know, unknown concentrations of anything. Um, for example, water potential tissue is the first time we looked at um, calibration covers, but they could give you any context. In the example, for example, they could say the use of protein and to measure the absorbance of that. So the standard sort of answer you give for explain how to um, produce a calibration curve, how to use a calibration curve to identify an unknown concentration, is to first of all produce known concentrations, okay? So you need to have known concentrations of certain things. So if we use the context of glucose, you need to know the concentration of glucose um, in those tubes, okay? So you might need to um, produce them. And if they ask you to suggest how to produce these, well, that would involve the use of dilution. So you need to dilute the stock solution with X centimeters cubed of water to produce whatever dilution is needed. So number one, produce known concentrations of whatever. Then you need to zero the colorimeter using a test tube that is full of water. Okay, so this is an important step. Zero the colorimeter. The colorimeter is the equipment you're going to use to measure the absorbance. Then, with the ones that we have the known concentration for, you need to measure the percentage absorbance of each of them using the colorimeter, okay? Then, plot a graph of your results, and that will be percentage absorbance on the y-axis against concentration on the x-axis. So you need to mention um, what, what, goes, what goes where on each axis, and then use your results to draw a curve, okay? So your curve or sort of line will look something like this. Eventually, this might start becoming a curve, um, and this has absorbance and concentration there. So what can we do with the curve? Well, we need to work out the concentration in an unknown sample. So we don't know whatever the concentration is in this test tube. So what we can do is we can measure the absorbance using a colorimeter, OK, and then write down the meaning of the absorbance. Let's say, for example, the absorbance was um, 0.665. So find percentage absorbance on graph. You might need to extrapolate it and then read across to the line of best fit or the curve you've drawn and then read down to find the concentration, which will be the corresponding X value. OK, so five percentage absorbance on the graph along the line of best fit or the curve and then read down to find the corresponding x value. So if, if we look at percentage error, then um, this is something that um, just measures the likelihood of error within something. Everything will have its chance of uncertainty. However, if we look at it in a dilution um, perspective, whenever you dilute a solution using a pipette, there is a chance of uncertainty. So we would dilute our solutions in order to produce the known concentrations, okay? So percentage of uncertainty is absolute error divided by whatever measurement you're taking times 100, okay? So how can we reduce the percentage of uncertainty? Well, percentage of uncertainty is absolute error divided by measurement. So one thing we can do is we can change the absolute error by changing the equipment. But what something else that is a bit more interesting is that we can chain manipulate sort of the numbers in the equation okay and that comes through manipulating the denominator so in order to reduce the percentage error reduce the answer we get we need to increase the denominator i.e effectively we need to divide by a bigger number um, so if our measurement is volume so we work at pinch and certainly when you're working out volume the way to double the volume is to half the concentration because concentration and volume are inversely proportional so to increase the denominator, we need to increase double the volume we took, and we do that by halving the concentration. So half the concentration, that will increase the denominator. We will divide by a bigger number, therefore our answer will be smaller. So common questions that they can sort of ask. Number one, the unknown concentration calculator is only an estimate. Explain why. And that's because that the intervals that we use to produce the curve are too large, therefore it's not precise enough. And our line of best fit or our curve is dot to dot, therefore, sorry, our line of best fit is dot to dot, therefore, that's not exact. So intervals generally are too large, okay? So that's the sort of answer that they generally want. So the intervals used to produce concentration are too large, or we did a dot to dot graph, and that's not that exact. The dot to dot is a consequence of the intervals. 
explain how to modify the method to calculate a more accurate unknown concentration, okay? Well, what we can do is we can use smaller intervals, all right? So if we look back at here, the concentration went up by 10 in this uh, picture here, but we can change that to have the concentration go up by 0 0.1 moles per decimeters cubed, and we can do repeats. So by doing a repeat, we can work out a mean, and that will be more accurate if we're repeating it. Explain why the steps um, are what, explain why the same steps are repeated when producing the calibration curve. This is to sort of maintain consistency and reliability. So what I mean by that is, why are these steps repeated? Why are they the same sort of order of sequence? That improves consistency and reliability. Sorry, repeatability, not reliability. Suggest another label for the y-axis rather than percentage absorbance on the curve, and that could be the time taken for the colour to change, okay? So uh, rather than looking at it, um, just measuring the absorbance, it could change from being red to blue or red to colourless or whatever if we use an indicator of sorts in it. Give one source of error in producing calibration curves and explain why this is a source of error, okay? So what you can say is that the production of dilution series um, is the source of error because we keep changing volumes and we keep changing concentrations and that's where the whole idea of uncertainty comes from okay so the production of dilution series is the source of the error because we keep changing the volume and changing the concentration and constantly pipetting so suggest how to reduce percentage error without changing the equipment okay so we already looked at this and in order to increase the value of the denominator we need to half the concentration describe what overlapping of an error bar suggests okay so this is just relevant for any sort of investigation involving error bars it's that if they overlap or standard um, or standard deviations it means that there is no significant difference final question when should a line of best fit be drawn with error bars um this is a bit of a trick question um effectively it needs to be drawn always and it needs to be drawn the answer you need to give is that if the line of best fit does not go through each of the points plot it reach the points plot on the graph to draw an error bar which effectively means all the time but this is the answer sort of giving the exam, okay? So generally we should always have error bars on whatever graphs that we're doing.